What an ending. Chelsea have beaten Brighton, but wow, that was a dreadful last 10 minutes. Brighton managed to score, make it 2-1, and that was unneeded. Let's be real, that was unneeded. For the game that that was, it was a messy game from start to finish. The refereeing was all over the place. VAR was all over the place. Chelsea's heads were all over the place. But some of the football was delightful. And we've seen an Nkunku goal. We've seen Reese James get sent off, which is the complete opposite to his return at the weekend. It's just a mess. It's annoying. It's frustrating. But we've won. 2-1. We obviously go into the final day of the season, still with it all to do. But Europa League is somehow in our sights. Yes, we need results to go in our favour, but it is there. And now it gets a bit confusing. So let's cover that first on how Europa League is possible, and then we'll get into the game. So at the moment, let me get the Premier League table up, right? Chelsea sit in sixth place because Manchester United have turned up out of nowhere and managed to pull a win out against Newcastle. So Newcastle and Manchester United, Man United in 8th, Newcastle in 7th. They're both on 57 points. Newcastle have the best goal difference with 21, Manchester United with minus 3. Then in 6th place is now Chelsea because we won tonight. We're on plus 13. Spurs are on plus 10 in 5th, but on 63 points. So Tottenham all they've got to do is get a draw against Sheffield United on the final day of the season and they will secure Europa League. If Chelsea get a draw or better, they will secure themselves Conference League football. However, if Spurs lose and Chelsea win, we could get Europa League through the league. And then to throw something else into the mix, it could go to the FA Cup final. If Manchester United win the FA Cup, and don't qualify for Europe through the league, which they probably won't do, Chelsea could get Conference League and Manchester United will gain an extra spot in the Europa League. If Manchester City win the FA Cup, Chelsea would get Europa League and Manchester United would get nothing. And then I think Newcastle in seventh might get Conference League. So it's absolutely crazy, right? It could still happen for Chelsea that we get Europa League, which is amazing going into the final day of the season. I've said it over and over again that the fact we're here on the last day of the season is ridiculously good. Ridiculously good from where we were at some point. Because for me, I genuinely felt like halfway through the season and, and even probably about January, February time, maybe even a little bit into March, we were going to be sat in mid-table and mid-table only. And Europe was long gone. I probably even felt like that after the Arsenal loss, after the Sheffield United draw, after the Burnley draw, after some of the awful games earlier on in the season as well. And somehow, we're sat here with European football nearly in our hands. How good is that? Fair play. Fair play to this group of players and the manager for working something out and making something happen. Let's look at tonight, right? I wasn't sure on exactly how the lineup would be, but I knew it would be limited changes, and I expected to see um, the return of a right-back instead of Trevor Chaloba playing there. That happened. Gusto returned. Felt like he had a really good game. Got Went down for injuries about three or four times and eventually came off injured, which is concerning for me. We saw Badashina and Chaloba, Kukurea in the same left-back inverted role, and Casado in the middle of the park. Now, Casado for me tonight was booed from the get-go. So was Kukurea. Kukurea was probably feeling that a little bit more. You could see he was a bit wound up. He was all over the gaff doing proper Kukurea things. Casado, what a performance. For me, he is looking better and better and better. There was a, a blip a couple of weeks ago, but my gosh, the blonde barnet on him, he looks phenomenal. He looks so good. And I'm not just talking about his air style. I am talking about the footballing ability this guy has. He's, he's so, so good to watch. I will not have it. No one is going to tell me he is in the discussion for flop of the season. If I see him in one team, I will dislike the video. Simple as that. Because 
He is so good. He is a very, very smart player, and it's taken a long time. But the evidence is clear that since Enzo Fernandez has left that midfield, we have seen Moises Casado absolutely blossom into a wonderful player. And I don't see us going forward without him in this Chelsea side right now. I'm, I'm being serious. He's that good. Look, the price tag is still excessive, but he looks really good. I want to talk about Trevor Chalaber quickly as well in defence. I think he's been exceptional since he returned. I absolutely do, 100%. I think we will be making a massive mistake if we let him go alongside letting Thiago Silva go. Because for me, Trev shows the most experience in this defence, bar Thiago Silva, by a long, long way. And I think he's been really, really good. Then we move up through the team. Conor Gallagher had another good game for me. I feel like Conor's really learned this season. I think he's coming a long way. How many times have we used to talk about Conor Gallagher getting a book in and then worry about him getting another book in and things like that and just being a little bit all over the place and reckless and whatever. Look, he didn't get booked tonight, but I'm seeing a real leader there. I really am. Even when he's not got the armband on, I see a real leader there. Um, obviously, he had it on and then it come off when Reese came on and then it went straight back on. So... Um, anyway, other than that, going forwards, I was kind of expecting maybe a change with Mudrik, to be honest with you, because I think he's been okay recently. But like I said in my preview, I don't think he's been unbelievable. He scored a great goal against Forrest, but other than that, I think he could have done better. Then he obviously got pretty much assaulted by Tarek Lamptey today. How that is not a red card is beyond me absolutely beyond me we saw Jackson get a disallowed goal and we saw something else as well get oh I can't remember now but this VAR was an absolute mess tonight we, we'll get on to it because um oh Kukurea should have had a penalty as well should have had a penalty potentially I, when I look back at it I can see why it would have been a bit soft but the ref's either getting his decision wrong and then it should have been a corner it's just a mess I had to make a TikTok literally speaking about VAR and the removal of it and the people officiating. Go and check out TikTok if you want to hear what I have to think about VAR potentially being removed and the impact it had on tonight's game. Uh, but seriously, Madrid came off and Nkunku came on at left wing later on into the game, obviously, and looked really, really good as well. Fantastic. That's the option for me going forward at left wing is Nkunku. He, he looked fantastic. Jackson, again, I thought like he had a good game, but... There's a couple of moments that are just so frustrating. And Madueke was relatively quiet today. Wasn't the superb one-on-one -on -one duelist that everyone's been talking about in recent weeks. I didn't really see that today or against Forrest, to be honest with you. But what I will say is Cole Palmer. Just when you think you've seen it all with him, he pulls out a header that is a, a top-class number nine would be proud of. The header is exceptionally good. Honestly, it's oh, it's just pure class. If you haven't seen it, because I know it wasn't on TV, go and have a look. It's an exceptional header. The way he loops it over the keeper, gets underneath the ball, gets the perfect trajectory on it, is sublime. Kukurea getting the assist for that one as well. Fantastic. What a player. Obviously, we then see Gusto um, after some beautiful football play a cross into Nkunku, and Nkunku scores, he gets the balloon out, we've waited far too long for that as well, I'm so happy he scored, I'll tell you what, he is a lethal finisher, we all saw the training videos midweek, we've seen him tonight have a couple of efforts that are this close, and then the finish, oh, we've missed that all season, someone who is so clinical, apart from Cole Palmer, and even Cole Palmer's not been that clinical at times, wow, we have missed that so much, um, and then, we're kind of not cruising through the game, but it's okay. And we've played pretty well. And we've we've managed against this Brighton side that definitely, when they get the ball down, they can play. And there was moments in the second half where I felt like they looked really good. Adingra, who I mentioned in my preview, looked so sharp. Jal Pedro obviously started when he was potentially doubtful tonight. Another fantastic player. Look, you can't deny it. The Zerbi's really got this side playing some good football. And then for some reason unknown to me, Reese James gets fouled by Jal Pedro. Yeah, definite yellow. Okay, Reese, go down. Waste a bit of time. You're the captain. 
let's be smart here. No, he kicks out. It's a definite red in my opinion. We saw Son do it a few years ago. It's a red. You don't give the referees a chance. You don't give them a chance to go to VAR because they're being sl absolutely slated for VAR right now. And as soon as they get a decision like that, they want to prove that VAR works. Otherwise, it looks like the Premier League's a failure. Now, the only people that failed are the referees, right? But then Reese James gives them no option. And I'm going to be completely honest with you here. I love Reese James. I think he's an exceptional footballer. But this season, he's done that twice in terms of not learning uh, on how to control himself. Newcastle got sent off. This game got sent off. Has missed so many games for injury. Can he really be the, the first captain of Chelsea Football Club? Because Conor Gallagher's been an ever-present. He's been a good leader. It went under the radar about the penalty situation. We've seen Conor Gallagher grow and mature this season. He's not the irrational kid that we saw start last season and get that red card. That's the captain of Chelsea Football Club, in my opinion, this season, is Conor Gallagher. He's worn the armband more than anyone. But no, Reese James needs to learn, and he needs to learn sharp. Look, he misses a game now. He's going to miss two into the start of next season. It's another few games missed in the career of Reese James. It's just, it just really is frustrating. It really is. And then we're under the cosh. There's 10 minutes added time, and lo and behold, Danny Welbeck scores. Because that's what Welbeck does. He's a top-class goal scorer. Just at being good and being a fox in the box, and well aware of how to score goals at the top flight, he just does that extraordinarily well. Extraordinarily well. And all whilst this is going on, Manchester United and Newcastle are battling it out. It's going 2-1, 3-2, all over the place. But Manchester United have got a win. And, and everything in the end worked out really well for Chelsea. We played good football. I'll give, I'll give Poch a bit of credit as well. The only thing I felt like he probably didn't need to do was when it was 2-0 and we were kind of sat and we were compact and it was looking okay, he was going to bring on Ugachukwu and Cassidy. Ended up doing that anyway. I think Conor Gallagher got a knock and whatever. I'm not sure those subs were needed, but that is being really picky. And we can see them without him on the pitch anyway. So, look. End of the matter is, I'm going to say fair play to Pochettino because... I've doubted him a lot of times this season. I really have. And I even doubted what I was seeing last week. But in the recent weeks, somehow, post that Arsenal loss, he has seriously learnt from his mistakes and motivated this young group of players to fight for European football when it looked all but lost. And I, I rate that so, so much. Because in the last few weeks... I'm going to say it. Something's happening at Chelsea Football Club. This is the evidence I've been waiting for. I've been potch out all season. But I'm stuck. He, I've, all, and all I've said is I'm not... The reason I'm potch out is, one, the links to Tottenham and all that. And two, I don't know if he can quite be the manager to put Chelsea in the area that they need to be. They need to be winning trophies. And obviously, we saw us do okay in domestic cups this season, but we were doing really poorly in the league. Really poorly. But then all of a sudden, since the focus has kind of gone away from those domestic cups and they've fallen away from us, Pochettino's got to work in the league. He really has. And I'm going to give him credit where it's due. From that second half against Villa onwards and even the Everton performance a few weeks ago before that, before the Manchester City semi-final, which really annoyed me, and the embarrassing defeat to Arsenal, he's he's got to work. And something's, something's happening with this Chelsea side. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but that's the type of evidence I need to see from Pochettino. And hey, look, I'm not saying I was too quick to judge. Because some of the decisions and the embarrassing results and the absolute mismanagement of so many players, in my eyes, shouldn't have ever taken that long and wasn't acceptable. But Poch's hand's been forced here with a lot of injuries. And maybe that kind of was some windscreen wipers and cleared his vision. You know, he turned on the Demister and then it was there. It was clear because when it's cluttered with so many players, sometimes it's hard to see. But I don't know how a, a top flight manager struggled for it to happen this late on in the season. I don't understand how it takes 30 games to assess a small group of players because of the amount of injuries that we had. But it has 
for Pochettino. And that, if that's how long it took him, that's how long it took him. But if he gets us European football, that is some recovery this season from the place that we were, we were in. Do I think that it's, it's, it's acceptable? Yeah, I probably do. I think if we get European football, I probably feel like it's acceptable. Before the season started, I wanted Champions League football. I made that absolutely clear. We were spending so much money on players I thought were going to be good. I thought Nkunku would have a fantastic season. And look what happened. We've had so many injuries. If we manage to get fifth or Europa League through a technicality, and we've shown evidence in recent weeks that we're starting to play good football, then I'd give him another year. I really would. Because I don't think the option is out there right now to replace Pochettino and Chelsea be in a better position. So look, am I still Poch out? Maybe. Maybe I am in the long run. But right now, I think a little bit of stability is going to be good for this football club if we can get European football, which is is very, very close now and almost in our hands. So fair play. Very well done in recent weeks, Chelsea Football Club. One game to go. It's a must win against Bournemouth. Come on. Up the blues.